Hello everyone and welcome to the Synology Partner Online Training. We have an awesome topic for everybody here today, going over a new Synology C2 ecosystem feature, and that is of course Synology C2 Backup. My name's Cody and I'm going to be your guide for this one this time around. I'm a senior technical account manager here at Synology and I'm really looking forward to be sharing this one with you today. So the Synology C2 Cloud ecosystem originally began as a backup destination for your hyper backup tasks. Now, this allows you to back up your shared folder data, application config data, and even your DSM config data directly back up to the cloud. Now, this backup destination has actually been modified and expanded upon and is now called Synology C2 Storage. You can still use it as a hyper backup destination, but you can also utilize it as a hybrid share folder directly in C2 Cloud, allowing you to utilize the hybrid share service that is already built into Synology's DSM 7. Now, there's also some great other features inside of the C2 Cloud ecosystem, that being Synology C2 Transfer, Identity, and Password. And we'll be having other webinars showcasing these different features at a later date. But the main focus of today is going to be Synology C2 Backup. And that is a secure, accessible, and efficient solution that allows your users to back up their endpoint PCs or servers from anywhere without necessarily having a Synology NAS. And this was a direct feature request from all of our end users. Now, another feature we're going to be talking about today is Synology C2 Identity. Now, what we're going to see of Synology C2 Identity is in no way exhaustive what it can actually do. What we're going to see today is probably its baseline functionality. It's going to provide your end users credentials that they can use on their C2 backup agent, and it will then pair their specific endpoint PCs directly back to their specific C2 identity in the management platform. Now again, C2 Identity is a much more feature-rich uh, solution than what we're going to see today, but it is definitely supplemental to making C2 Backup that much easier to manage. So to start off today, we're going to begin with some backup basics. You typically want to backup everything in your backup plan, from your workstations, servers, virtual machines, to even your software as a service platforms. Now your servers and your workstations and your virtual machines may be critical assets for your organization and your software as a service platforms typically only have retention for your data from about 30 to 90 days. So having a backup plan in place will help you restore those different modules should you ever need to. You also want to have a backup plan in place to help protect you from ransomware. Now how your backups are going to help you with that is you can implement read-only backup versions so if other data on your network is corrupted by a ransomware intrusion, you can still restore from those read-only backup versions. You also want to keep a backup copy off-site somewhere so that if there's an issue with your primary site, either an intrusion or a physical disaster, you can reconstitute your data at that secondary site and keep your organization running. Lastly, you want to have a recovery plan in place. You don't want to be discovering your recovery plan when you need it most, so you can actually hit those recovery time objectives during that disaster recovery event. Now on the agenda today, we're going to start off on why you might want to choose Synology C2 and Synology C2 Backup for your organization. We're then going to move into the implementation of Synology C2 Backup, both for your endpoints as well as for your Microsoft 365 instance, and then we're going to show you how to recover all of the things we set up. So why might you want to use Synology C2 for your organization? Chief among these is the accessibility that you get by utilizing a cloud platform for your backups. You can access your backups from anywhere, and you can even back up those devices from anywhere if you're a business user or a home user alike. You can also have high levels of security by utilizing Synology C2. Instead of worrying about uh, firewall rules and other security measures you have to take for on-premise devices, all of the security with Synology C2 backup is taken care of by the Synology data center teams. Also, with Synology C2, there is scalability built in. You can easily grow the amount of storage that you have in your Synology C2 backup to allow you to back up more devices. Whereas if you were just backing up on site only, you'd have to plan for additional hardware possibly or expand the uh, RAID arrays that might be in your backup servers. Now, in terms of accessibility for Synology C2 backups, there's no NAS required for backing up your endpoints to Synology C2 backup. There's an easy to use Windows agent for your endpoints that is quick and easy to install uh, pretty much anyone can do it since it's wizard-based. There's also a direct integration with Microsoft 365 and Synology C2. All you need to do to link those two clouds together is input your admin credentials, and you can begin backing up at Microsoft 365 at that point. There's also a simple management workflow for all of your admins. There's one web portal to control everything inside of the C2 backup ecosystem. You can control backup policies, manually backup different devices, and even manage 
uh, your C2 identity users permissions to various different endpoint devices from a similar uh, web portal. Also, in terms of affordability with C2 Backup, there's competitive pricing and simple subscription options, which makes it easy for businesses and home users alike to manage their backups for their endpoints with ease. Now, in terms of security, it begins with encryption before it ever leaves your endpoint device. It is end-to-end -end encryption, so you can rest assured that your data is taken care of before it ever moves around. Now, in terms of access protection, there is a private access key built into Synology C2. So before you can ever mount those backup images, you will have to enter in that encryption key before you can see and interact with your backup data. There's also full support for multi-factor authentication protocols inside of Microsoft 365. Now, in terms of cloud resiliency with Synology C2, it has the same level of resiliency you've come to expect with other data center, data center providers around. Now, lastly, with scalability, there's a lot of flexible growth by utilizing a cloud platform like this. And what's unique to Synology C2 Backup is you actually pay by storage and not by individual device. So all you need to do to expand your C2 Backup environment is to just get a little bit of additional storage and you can begin backing up additional devices. Now, these backups are incremental backups and this helps to increase efficiency. After the initial ingestion of data, you won't be having to send hundreds of gigabytes of data every time you do a new backup version. It's just going to be sending the change to data. Now, in terms of data deduplication, this actually helps the end users and organizations actually save a little bit of extra storage space. By having block level deduplication, you can reduce the backup footprint inside of the Synology C2 backup environment. So let's talk about the implementation for the entire C2 backup solution. Now, we're gonna start off by how you're going to implement on the Windows devices. Again, this is going to be simply just installing an agent and walking through that wizard for your Windows PCs, Windows 7, Windows 10, Windows 11 even, and your Windows servers. Now, we're also then going to move into how you're going to implement with Microsoft 365. And again, that's as simple as just getting your admin credentials for your Microsoft 365 instance and following the wizard inside of C2 Backup to link the two clouds together. Now, we're gonna end things out in this implementation section by talking about how you're gonna actually still back up your Synology NAS. Now, this is a little bit separate from what we're talking about today with C2 Backup. We're actually gonna be talking about how to back up your on-premise NAS data up to Synology C2 Cloud, and you're gonna be doing that with Synology's Hyper Backup solution once again. Now, in terms of Windows devices, deployment via Active Directory is coming soon, so it's gonna make it very easy to actually install and roll out Synology C2 Backup to your endpoints uh, utilizing group policies inside of Active Directory. There's also options to schedule and trigger your backups, and you can set these schedules to be custom frequencies. And again, those triggers are going to be event-based for whenever users log out or log back in, for example. There's also different levels of compliance and retention you can set for your C2 backups. These policies are adjustable and even customizable, so they're only really limited by your plan's capacity. So you can stay compliant and retain your data pretty much as long as you need to, so long as you have the space to do so. So as you can see, we're logging into our C2 backup environment right here. What we're gonna notice is we already have a couple devices already paired back, and we'll get back to those in just a second. But what I first wanted to show everybody is how we got to this screen first and foremost. We're on our on-premises tab for our endpoint devices on the top left, and we're under personal computers. You'll see these two different devices. They have other users already paired to them, one the Synology account, and another one with Carl's credentials. This is actually the C2 Identity UPN address, and it's the first time we're seeing C2 Identity in action for your C2 backup environment. Now, if we go to management, you're gonna see all of the lists of your C2 Identity users uh, under this menu right here. Now, you'll see that there's all kinds of different users, and they all have individual UPN addresses that you'll see right here, like you can see Carl's. Now, these UPN addresses are gonna be what you want all of your end users to log in with on their respective endpoint agents. It's what pairs back their individual endpoint PCs and those agents back to their C2 identities. So what we're gonna do is take this remote worker UPN right here, and we're gonna take that and actually utilize that to log into an agent in just a second. So first, we need to pull that agent uh, so we can install it on a new computer. So we're gonna click New Device and download this agent, which works for Windows 7, 10, and 11. We're gonna let that go ahead and download and go ahead and install it after it finishes that download and follow the wizard like we normally do. Now in just a moment, we're gonna go ahead and get into that agent and actually pair it back to C2 Backup. So as you can see right now, we already have the C2 Backup agent installed. So we'll click Let's Start and start this whole process. 
First, the agent has to start its communication back to the Synology C2 data centers and those servers there. So once it's all finished with that, we're gonna to need to type in that remote worker UPN credentials that we mentioned before from C2 Identity. So we're gonna finish typing out that entire UPN address here. And we're going to also type in the password for that remote worker user. Once that's all finished, it's now going to start creating a link between this agent and the C2 backup environment and our data centers. Now, it has an option to backup right now, and we're gonna choose not now right now, and we're actually gonna go back into the main C2 backup menu and refresh here to show you how it actually paired that device back to the C2 backup environment. You'll see now we have that remote worker user that logged in with their UPN address, and it hasn't been backed up yet, and it's part of our default policy right now. So if you wanted to change your backup policy, you can create one under the backup policy tab on the left, and we're gonna name a backup policy here for all of our remote workers in this case. We're gonna leave it on personal computers because our remote workers just have those, and you can set your backup scope as you need to system volumes, you can individually specify certain volumes if you wanted to back those up, but for most end users for personal computers, an entire device backup with external drives is sufficient. On this next page, you can set up your schedule. It can be daily, you can customize it to be daily at a specific time or even weekly. And you can go by an event trigger as well with the screen locked, signing out, or whenever the device powers on on top of that. So now you can also set up your backup policy. You can keep up all versions if you had the actual space in your backup plan, or you can specify how many versions you actually wanna retain. Uh, if you check out this information bubble, we do recommend at least uh, retaining up to 12 months here. So at least keep 12 versions for yourself uh, so you can restore as you need. Now we're gonna select what devices we want under this backup policy. We'll select a couple different users here. And we're gonna go ahead and apply this. Once we apply this to a couple different devices, we're gonna be opened into the remote workers uh, policy menu for this uh, backup policy. You'll see under apply devices, which uh, devices this policy applies to specifically. And since we skipped that initial backup for that remote worker device, we're gonna go ahead and trigger that manually from the C2 backup web portal right here. So we're gonna select the device and go ahead and back up now. Now, for your Microsoft 365 backups with C2 backup, you have abilities to customize your protection inside of that environment. You can automate your backups of new accounts and bring them into your backup policies as they're ingested into your Microsoft 365 environment. Now, there's gonna be other Microsoft 365 protections coming soon, so keep an eye out for those down the line. There's also secure integration with Microsoft 365, since Synology C2 Backup actually supports Microsoft 365's multi-factor authentication protocols. And this secure link between the two clouds, Synology C2 and Microsoft 365, is military-grade encryption. So you can rest assured that the communication between these two clouds is secure and your data is protected while they're communicating. There's also some self-service recovery options for Microsoft 365 backups coming. Uh, that will allow your employees to easily access their own data inside of their Microsoft 365 backups in C2 backup so they can actually restore those as they need. This will ultimately help reduce the load on your ad administrators in your environment and allow users to just take care of their own problems as they come in. So as you can see, we're already in our C2 backup mo module once again, and you can see we're not in the on-premises tab any longer. We're actually underneath the cloud tab right here. We're gonna click this add task button and click on the Microsoft 365 card to begin this whole process of linking the two services. As you can see, it launches a Microsoft 365 login that's pretty familiar to you if you uh, are even doing this process in the first place. Now, on this next screen, after typing in your admin credentials, you're gonna grant Synology C2 backup access to all the permissions it needs to actually run correctly. So now on this next screen, what we're gonna be doing is finalizing the link between Microsoft 365 and C2 Backup and generating the user list required to add the users into C2 Backup. So this can take a couple seconds, so we're just gonna go ahead and wait here for just a couple moments. So as you can see, we're all connected now and we're ready to finish out the add user wizard. So we're gonna go ahead and click this button down here. And in just a couple seconds, the screen that pops up is going to be your user list that is now able to be imported into your C2 backup environment from your Microsoft 365 instance. So what you're gonna see is the entire user list for that entire Microsoft 365 instance. And what you can do if you wanted to just back up certain individuals, you can go ahead and search for those individuals with the search bar at the top. 
So for example, if we wanted to grab our main admin person, like Jon Snow, for example, you could search for them and add them individually. If you wanted to add your whole organization, you can do so with the top button right here to just grab all the users in this list. So now that we've grabbed our whole organization, we're going to hit next. And this next screen is all about your backup policy, the default policy in this case. You'll notice for the backup schedule, it gives you some information for how C2 Backup actually pulls the data across if you wanted to read more into that. Another feature on this page is the auto protection. And what this does is it allows you to automatically ingest new Microsoft 365 users as they're created in that environment to bring them under this default policy for this Microsoft 365 Backup. You can also enable auto mapping to C2 users. And that means that if the prefix of your C2 identity users and your Microsoft 365 users matches, it'll automatically map those two together. And of course, we'll be going over this in greater detail in the dedicated C2 identity webinar in the future. So now that we've enabled all of that and we're adding in all these users, they're going to begin populating, populating in the Synology Incorporated list right here. So now what we're going to want to do next is actually check out our backup policy and review some of the settings there. There's a couple things you can change in this menu. As you can see, it's an automated daily backup. You can choose to keep all versions depending on how much space you have in your plan, or you can specify a version limit if you so needed. Of course, we specify to at least have 12 versions. Now what we're going to want to do next is head back over to our Synology Incorporated task right at the top. And we're going to want to trigger a backup for all of our users right here. So we're going to go ahead and select several of our users across this list, actually the entire organization, and go ahead and trigger this backup now. What you're going to notice is almost immediately after triggering the backup, the status will change for each individual user as those backups begin to roll through. So in terms of the implementation for backing up your on-site Synology NAS, you're going to be utilizing Synology's Hyper Backup. Now keep in mind, this is separate from our main topic today, which is on C2 Backup, which is a direct-to-cloud backup from your Windows endpoints. Synology NAS have, still have this functionality to back up the data that is residing on those local NAS, utilizing Hyper Backup directly to Synology C2 storage. So if you're existing in a hybrid infrastructure where you have a little bit of C2 Backup modules in place and you have a local on-site NAS, you're still going to want to use Synology's Hyper Backup to Synology C2 storage to take care of that data. So in this next section, we're going to talk about your recovery plan for your C2 backup environment. Because if you remember from our backup basics slide, you want to make sure you have a recovery plan in place for that day you need it. Now, in the recovery section today, we're going to start off with file level download for your C2 backups for endpoints, showing you that you can access your files from anywhere and quickly gain access to them as you need. We're also going to show you in that section how to fully restore individual emails and also mailboxes for your Microsoft 365 environment. We're then going to move into image-based recovery, and we're going to do a full bare metal restore in our demo in just a little bit. Lastly, we're going to talk about BCDR, which is a little bit separate from what our main topic is today. Our main topic is, of course, C2 Backup, which is backing up your endpoints directly to the cloud. But the Synology NAS that you might have local has a whole business continuity and disaster recovery suite available to it. And those different tools on your local Synology NAS might have additional features that you need alongside your C2 Backup instance. Now, for file level and email rest restoration, you have the option to download your files and folders from the restore portal for C2 Backup. So you can gain access to and pull your data from the cloud and download it from anywhere, anytime you need. We're also going to talk about how to restore email to Microsoft 365. Because you remember, we linked Synology C2 to your Microsoft 365 instance. And we'll show you how seamless the restoration of your mail and mailboxes is in just a second. So as you can see, we're in our C2 backup module. We're on the on-premises tab, and we're underneath personal computers. You'll notice we have several other devices already paired back to C2 backup. That's because our other end users have utilized their UPN C2 identity addresses to pair their specific endpoint agents back to C2 backup. And that was all done successfully. You can see several backups have now run accordingly uh, due to their default backup policy. Now what we're going to do next is actually perform a restore for remote worker. We're going to select the three dots on the right here and click download files and folders. This will actually launch your C2 backup restore portal. And this is going to be where you can grab any of your files and folders and download them immediately anytime from anywhere. But you're going to notice you have to type in your C2 encryption key first before you can mount your backup data. Once you do so, you're going to be, see, you're going to be able to see all of your versions listed on the right hand of your screen. So what you can see right here is under the versions, we can actually click a different version and roll back to a previous point in time. 
and it will show you your bare metal backup if you've set the C2 backup that way. It'll show you your bare metal backup and your file structure exactly how it laid on that day when that backup ran. You can also navigate through your backup versions utilizing the calendar on the top right. Now if we drill down into the C drive here, you're going to see it's the same structure as you probably remember from whenever you took a backup of your specific device. And we're going to drill down into our users here and select a specific user and get down into the documents folder. Once in the documents folder, we're going to go ahead and navigate to our work stuff, our work documents folder, and download that so that we can gain access to it again, because maybe we had an accidental deletion or something like that. So we're going to download our work stuff folder. It's going to zip that work stuff folder and get it into your downloads folder. You can then unpack that and use those files inside that folder accordingly. Now, if you didn't know where a specific file was, but you did know the name of it, you can easily search for that file in this directory by via the search bar on the top here. So for example, we have a coffee photo that we want to search for. In this case, if we just type in coffee, it'll immediately find that specific photo and you could download that also. So as you can see, we're back in our C2 backup module and we've let that initial backup task for our Microsoft 365 instance finish up. So it's ingested all of that initial data from your Microsoft 365 users. There's tons of successful statuses across this entire organization for this task. So to do a restore, we're going to search for a specific user using the search bar at the top. We're going to find that user, click the three dots on the right, and also click restore. What that's going to do is actually launch your recovery portal, very similar to what you saw with the C2 backup for your physical devices. Now, just like that as well, you're going to need to first decrypt your data before you gain access to all those backup versions. So what we're going to do is, when prompted, type in our C2 encryption key to get access to all those backup versions for our Microsoft 365 backup. So while this is decrypting all of that data, what you're going to notice is whenever it's finished up, is you're going to be greeted with this pretty similar mailbox structure that you would have seen if you were to log in with that Microsoft 365 user on the day that this backup was taken. So as you can see, you have access to like your archive mailbox as well as your inbox on top of that and all of the emails that were underneath all those individual folders when this backup version was taken. So now that you have access to all these versions, you can see all your emails, you can easily navigate between your versions utilizing the pane on the right. Now you can easily just with a simple click of a button move to a different version and you'll see your mailbox structure exactly as it was the day that backup was taken. Now if you have a lot of backup versions, the easiest way to navigate between them is probably going to be the calendar button at the top. You can jump to specific days if you needed to. And you can also grab the latest version with the button at the bottom of the cal calendar. Now that we've explored how to navigate through your versions, let's do a restore. So you can actually restore multiple emails at once or you can select individual ones if you wanted to. So if you were to select multiple emails, inside of your inbox list, for example, a restore select emails button gets populated at the top of the screen. And if you wanted to restore an individual email, you click the circular restore button on the far right. Now, once greeted with the restore selected emails menu, you can select where you want to restore this to, to a different user, to the original folder, a new folder, and you can choose to either overwrite or skip existing items. Once you've selected all the set settings you actually need for the specific restore, a simple click of a button to begin that restore will launch that whole restore process. You can easily monitor that restore process in your restore details menu right here. And since we're just restoring a couple emails and there's a direct link between C2 backup and your Microsoft 365 instance, the restore happens pretty quickly since we're just restoring a couple emails in this case. Now, if you wanted to restore pretty much everything, there's a restore all button and you can choose to restore your entire mailbox, your entire archive mailbox, and again, choose where you actually want that restore to go and also skip or overwrite your restores as needed. So that's how easy it is to restore your data inside of C2 Backup for Microsoft 365. You can easily navigate through your versions with simple clicks of the button and restore entire mailboxes or individual emails with ease. So now we're going to explore image-based recovery for your C2 backups that we've just created. You want to first create your boot media even before you actually need it. Uh, this is a USB device that you use for those full bare metal recoveries. And if you spend a bunch of time actually creating that recovery media on the day that you actually need it, you're probably going to miss your recovery time of objectives for your backup plan. So make sure you create and get familiar with this recovery media before you need it. Now the bare metal restore is one that will completely restore your device back to a previous point in time based on whatever that backup version was. But you also have options to restore just the boot 
uh, partition and other specific volumes if you need it. But for most users, you're going to want to probably do a full bare metal restore if you need to do a restore like this. So as you can see, we're booting into that bootable recovery media that we created just a bit ago for our bare metal recoveries for C2 backup. So what this is going to give you is a wizard-based bootable environment that you're going to follow through with through this entire bare metal recovery process. Now on this first screen, when you hit start, you're first going to be greeted with a registration code, and then a web browser is also going to pop up on top of that. So what you're going to do with this web browser is verify and authenticate with your C2 backup account so that you can begin this entire restore process. So when, once we click on verify, we're going to go ahead and sign in with my admin credentials in this case. And of course, we're going to type in our password. And once we finish typing all this in, our verification process will now have been complete, and you can go ahead and close out the browser window. However, now that we're going to be selecting backup versions and all that stuff, we're going to need to decrypt our backup versions, of course, just like we had to uh, inside of the recovery portals that we saw previously. So we're going to type in our C2 encryption key to gain access to the backup versions that we need to complete this restore. So now it's unpacking all of those images, and now we can select a source device that we want to utilize to image this current device that we're on. So I'm going to select this desktop right here and hit Next. And then you can choose how you actually want to accomplish this restore, either a full bare metal restore, or you can choose to restore system volumes or specific volumes like drive letters, for example. For us, we're going to do the entire bare metal recovery process as mentioned. So we're going to use the first one. Now on the next screen, you're going to select what versions you want to restore from. These are the images that you're going to select to overwrite this current system. So what we're going to do here is select that version, make sure all of these are correct here, and then go ahead and click Next. And you, of course, want to make sure you have enough space to house all of the data that is in that backup version. In this case, we do, and we're going to hit OK. So we're going to allow this restore to finish up here. You can already see some things are completed, like MSR, for example. So we're just going to wait a couple moments for this restore to finish up here. So you can see that this restore is now almost done. And once it's all finished up, we're going to continue on and click Finish here. So whenever we finish, now that we've finished this recovery media's whole restore process, we're going to need to restart the PC. And you want to remove that recovery media so you don't accidentally boot into it once more. So we're going to let Windows you know, do its thing and finish booting up. We're seeing those all too familiar circular dots kind of dancing around at the bottom of the screen. And we're going to be greeted with our standard Windows splash screen right now. So we're going to go through our login process. And since we did a bare metal recovery, you should recognize the user that's listed. I can recognize that it's my user for Cody. And when we log in, you should see all of your different applications, et cetera, right where they were supposed to be, like our C2 backup agent, for example. Because again, this was a full bare metal recovery utilizing C2 backup and this cloud-based recovery platform. So in this next portion of the day, we're going to be talking about the BCDR, or Business Continuity and Disaster Recovery Solutions inside of the Synology ecosystem. In this portion, keep in mind, we're going to be talking about an on-site Synology NAS and the functionality built into that, which is separate from our main topic today, which is C2 Backup, backing up your endpoint PCs and servers directly to the Synology C2 cloud. Now, there's all kinds of features built into the Synology NAS that make it an all-in-one backup appliance. So having some sort of mix of your on-site Synology NAS and some of the Synology C2 services gives you a hybrid solution that gives you the best of both worlds. With the Synology NAS on site, you can back up pretty much everything, your endpoints, servers, software as a service, and even your virtual machines. You can also replicate this backup data off site to another Synology NAS utilizing our snapshot replication package. Simultaneously, the same snapshot technology is best for ransomware protection because it provides those read-only copies of your backup data. And if you remember from our backup basics slide, that was a prime node in your backup and disaster recovery plan. Last but certainly not least is the functionality to spin up your endpoints, uh, your servers, and your virtual machines directly on the Synology NAS utilizing Virtual Machine Manager. By spinning up directly on your local Synology NAS, you'll dramatically reduce your recovery time and get your organization back up and running as quickly as possible. Now, to recap everything we talked about today, we first started off with why you might want to use Synology C2 for your organization. And we discussed how C2 Backup is an accessible, scalable, and secure solution to house your backup data. We then moved into implementation for C2 Backup, how to set up your Windows agents, configure your 
different backup policies. We then went into creating your backup recovery media and how to link your Microsoft 365 instance back to Synology C2 backup. We then moved into the recovery options that you have in this environment, showing you the different recovery portals. For your endpoint PCs, we showed how to do file or folder level download of your backup data. And we also show you how to do mail and mailbox restores for your Microsoft 365 instance. We also showed you how to do a full bare metal image recovery utilizing that recovery media we created uh, during the implementation section. Now, if you need additional help past what we talked about today, we definitely want to encourage you to find a partner. And you can find a partner at Synology.com slash where to buy. Now, they can provide all kinds of services up to white glove services, and they are an excellent resource for your organization. And they might even be able to ease other IT pain points that might be affecting you. Now, for business end users that have their own internal IT team, we actually have a dedicated team that can help you. This is the business onboarding team, and it's onboarding at SynologyAmerica.com if you ever need to get in contact with us. I'm actually one of the individuals on that team. We can help you with product assistance and design consultations and even get you a resale referral and introduction if you so need. Now, that about wraps things up for today. We hope to see you next time, and thanks for tuning in. Take care.